Hello everyone, I'm Paul, also known as Rorschach on the forums, and this is a walkthrough of Sword of the Stars 2. In this video I'll be covering how to start a game from starting up the game to your first turn. I'll be posting other videos in this series to hopefully cover all the major actions and screens in the game, so stay tuned. Alright, let's get started here. So when you first begin a game, this is the first screen that you've got, the game setup screen. Uh, first thing you want to select along the left hand side here are the 25 plus maps that are currently with the game. You notice on each map you've got a number in brackets here. This is the maximum number of players that you can have within the game, um, but you can also choose less. A summary of each of those is over here. Each of the maps is over here on the map summary size. And then of course the big window in the middle here shows you the size of the map itself. So we take a look at big disc. Um, just like any of the other star maps in the game or 3D windows in the game, uh, it's home world controls. You hold down your right mouse button and rotate to pan around a central point. Uh, mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Double click to center your camera on a particular object. So once you've choose, chosen a uh, map, then you get into the modifications that you can do down here in the bottom panel. Um, starting out in the middle here, these are the available factions. So if you want to lock out one or more of the seven factions in your game, then you can uh, select one of these icons here, and then those people won't be included uh, in your game. Over here on the left hand side are more global options that you have. Strategic turn time, which starts out at infinite. Um, I highly recommend if you're playing a multiplayer game that you want to set a limit for this. Uh, you can have some griefing if people don't press end turn. Uh, your game will, if not everybody in the game presses end turn, then your game's just going to keep going on forever. So um, if you're playing single player, you can definitely keep it at infinite, but if you're going to go multiplayer, you want to set at least some sort of time, even if you want to do something along a speed chess route here uh, with two minutes or more. Uh, the combat turn time is set at five minutes. That's one more minute than what we had in Sword of the Stars 1, uh, but you'll see in the combat video some of the reasons for that. There's more strategic maneuvering. Again, this can go all the way from three minutes to 12 minutes. Um, I like to keep things pretty much at the at the standard rate. Economic efficiency and research efficiency, these are global settings for the entirety of every uh, player in the game. So it's just basically speeding up or slowing down uh, how things are moving. It can be anywhere from 200 to 50 percent. Uh, along the same lines, the planet size and planet resources here, uh, you can also increase or decrease them from 50 to 150 uh, percent. A note about the star maps themselves. So the star maps in Sword of the Stars 2, uh, each of these individual stars represents an entire system. Their location and relation to each other is going to be static uh, for each map. The starting locations in each map are static as well, but what is randomized is the actual consistency of the stars or the systems themselves. So the particular uh, spectral range of the stars, the size of the stars, how many planets and asteroid fields and moons and things like that are around it, those are all randomized at the start of the game. The last panel that we've got down here is more specific on affecting the individual players. So you see it starts out with the maximum number of players, but you can reduce that to give yourself a little more room in a big map. Um, the initial number of systems, and again, this is going to be for all players. So you start out with three, can't do any less than three, but you can actually go up to uh, nine total. And then starting technologies, you can increase that all the way up to 10. And the initial treasury, you start out at half a million credits, but you can go all the way up to a full million or start at zero. Uh, last three things that we've got here are random encounters. So um, the chances of random encounters happening in a game, again, we go from zero up to 200%. So to keep you and your other opponents on their toes when war isn't exactly broken out, um, you've got that. And then also the grand menaces that you have, how many of those you can have at any one time in the game. Uh, default is set at one. Then the last thing that we've got down here is the victory condition. And you click on that, it brings up this dialog box that shows what the 
victory conditions you can set for this particular game. You also notice that the game map name uh, is set up here um, as well as which victory conditions you're currently under. So there's only one victory condition that you can pick. Uh, last side standing is your general 4x, so you gotta wipe out the other guy. Last capital standing is you have the wipe out everybody else's capital worlds, but you don't have to destroy them in detail. Star Chambers is a particular type of station. The first person to build an upgrade to five star chambers wins. Uh, the gem worlds are a particular type of uh, super colony uh, that I'll go into detail in probably the econ uh, video. That's the first one to make five gem worlds. Provinces are a larger uh, political boundary. Probably talk about that more in the star map video. Uh, first to establish up to five provinces. First person to build up to ten leviathans, and then first one to collect uh, to have a certain percentage of the systems claimed for themselves, anywhere from 20% to 80%, starting out at 60. So you don't have to complete a game uh, with to destroy them in detail. You can play around with the different victory conditions that you have. Once you've got everything set the way that you like it, then you click on Confirm, and that brings you over to the game lobby. Um, here in the game lobby, the big important part over here is on the right hand side. This is your list of players. Um, if you're doing a multiplayer, this is where everybody will be logging into the lobby at this point. First thing that you can see is that you've got all eight settings with this particular um, with this particular map that we have. Um, when you load up a map, you'll come to this game lobby screen as well, and you can switch yourself from slot one into any of the other slots by right clicking and then bringing up that swap slots. Um, you see over here that we've got preset teams that you can do so depending on how many players you have in the game you can have up to six teams going at any one time so you can set up permanent alliances beginning at the head of the game. If you're playing a multiplayer game and you want to do a comp stomp put everybody on one team put all the bad guys on another team. If you want more of a challenge you can uh, have some of the enemies or some of the other players some of the AI players uh, gang up on you by adding them to a particular team. So once you've picked your player slot, then we come back over here to the uh, Empire selection. If you want to change your name, that's what you can do right here. If you want to change the faction, so pick one of the seven factions that you have. You notice the six of them that came with the original game have this immersion. Um, the immersion will actually change the look of the ships. It'll also add some different um, music and uh, voice barks, things like that. Um, everybody who's gotten the extended edition will have these immersion packs. There isn't one out for the Loa yet, they were just added. So once you pick which particular faction you want, then you can dig into the avatars, uh, which represents you individually. Pick a badge, which shows up these little holographic badges that are on your ship, which are pretty cool. Um, if you're playing against the AI, setting the AI difficulty at easy, medium, or hard. And then there are particular um, individual faction settings or individual player settings right here. This will be by default taken from this last screen that you have, but if you want to give yourself or give your enemies somebody else a particular advantage, changing it here does not change it for the other players. So you can kind of switch around with that. Uh, Again, down here with the representation of your ship, um, 3D controls, right click and hold to pan around, mouse, mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Um, last things that you've got here is you can pick a color. This is your primary color for your empire and will be represented in the UI and the callouts uh, in the star map. And then you've got a secondary color here that you can pick from pretty much any uh, any color, RBG color that you've got out there. Uh, the one last thing that was added relatively recently is this little flashing icon up in the uh, up in the upper uh, left hand corner. This is actually a global chat. Say hi to everybody here, folks. Um, that is everybody who's playing the game currently has access to global chat. You can also access that when you're in game as well. It's kind of a nice place to ask if you've got um, any questions. The community can kind of help you out with that. So that's pretty much how you get a game going. Uh, once you've picked everything, then you just head on out and press start, and you're in the game. So 
uh, that's it. I appreciate any feedback from folks. Uh, if you've got any questions or anything like that, and keep on the lookout for uh, continuing uh, videos in the series where we're going to go into more depth on actually playing the game. Thanks for watching.